Even if you don't believe in Sasquatch, he believes in you. So today we're making a cool little stock sign using our template of the month for April of 2024. And it's our little Sasquatch love guy. And we're also using the inch and a half Clarendon letters. For those of you guys that are new, cause we got a lot of you, our templates of the month are actually free for our premium and executive members. Membership comes with templates, stencils, router bit sharpening. I'll put some information right up here and also down in the description so you can check that out. So guys, stock signs are something that aren't customized at all, that you can just make a batch, say of five or 10, and then when you go to a fair, or even if you're just selling online, they're just ready to go. You can have them completely done, packaged up with the hooks and everything, and just take money and give them a sign. So it's kind of nice because you can actually make a bunch of them in your shop at your own pace. Then when you go to a fair, you just have a stack, people like them, bam, it's nice and easy. So that's something that we recommend everybody does if you're gonna go to a fair or go sell on site. Just have a batch of cool little stock signs and I think this is a good one. So I will have links in the description below of everything we use today, and you can go check them out on makeawoodsign.com. So let's go make some sawdust. So the first thing we need to do is lay out our sign. Me personally, whenever I have a template like our little Sasquatch love guy, I like to put it on there just to get an idea of how much space on the board this is gonna take up. Now this sign is gonna have two lines and it's gonna be outset. So when you're laying it out, you really need to kind of be aware of the cloud that's going to go around it. So what I did is I marked where my two lines are going to be right in the middle. And then I used our little speed or not speed square, adjustable square to make my lines and then connected them with a the yardstick. Now I put my first line on, which is going to be the longest line to kind of get a basic idea. I want to have the same amount of space on the left part of the board as on the right part of the board and that includes where the Sasquatch guy is gonna be. Then I just kind of put my letters down and I wanna make sure that I have enough space in between the letters to be able to fit that profile bit at between 3 16 and a quarter inch in between the letters. I don't wanna to have to cut off bits and pieces of the letters because I didn't leave myself enough room. Once they were all laid out, I just used our black primer and I sprayed the letters and the Sasquatch guy. You want to be careful doing this. If you hold the can too close to the sign, then it's going to spray those letters all over the place. So take your time, use short spurts, and make sure your distancing is right. Once it was dry, I drew a line on the top and bottom of each line of wording. That way it gave me a better idea of exactly where to carve. Real quick guys, we're on a huge campaign to try to hit 100,000 subscribers this year. So if you like what you're seeing, you like what we do, do us a favor, hit that subscribe button, click the little bell icon so you get notified. We got tons of cool stuff coming up and we would really appreciate it. The first bit I used is a carving liner at an eighth of an inch deep. Now I only did a really small portion of this where the Sasquatch makes the heart with his hands, which is hilarious by the way, they're really small lines. So I did that and I did the fingers with the carving liner bit. Again, guys, this is a super fine detail bit, so you don't wanna carve any more than you absolutely have to. It dulls quite a bit faster than the other bits, but man, for something like this, I don't think I could have done it with a profile. Now I switched my profile bit at 3 16 seven inch deep and I finished doing the Sasquatch. So the Sasquatch is gonna be inset, so I'm gonna carve the wood part away. And where the toes go and where it kind of meets around the head a little bit, don't forget that you can get a little bit of a finer point by lifting the edge of that router and just using the tip of the router bit. Now with the spacing that I did between the letters, I don't have to worry about that. There are a few tight spots, like in between the serifs on the H that's coming up right here. But you'll notice I left it full depth. I just cut right in the middle, so it took a tiny little bit off on the left side and the right side. But you round those off and nobody will ever tell. It just makes it a little bit easier to carve. One issue that new carvers have is they tend to carve way too shallow. I did that for a long time, but dad and grandpa set me straight on that. When you carve really shallow, number one, you're gonna have a ton of high spots after you spray and sand, 
But number two, it doesn't give the sign the depth that really kind of makes it stand out. If you're going to carve super duper shallow, then it could just be burned in there. Part of the appeal, I guess, of a carved sign is the fact that it's three dimensional, that you have that depth. So make sure when you're doing something, carve as deep as you can for that particular situation. There are certain areas like in the V coming up where you're gonna have a tiny little spot in between the two sides. You can get that with a 90 degree, but sometimes it's a little easier just to take that out with the profile bit. That way you don't take the risk of nicking those sides. We get questions on the S, like that little part right there all the time. That's another area like the H that I leave at full depth and I just round off that serif. Yeah, I'm cutting a little tiny part of it out, but I think it actually looks better. The biggest thing when it comes to letters is that you want some symmetry. You want the all the S's to look the same. You want both sides of the H to look the same. So as long as you keep the distance between the two sides, then you're good to go. Don't worry if you end up cutting a little bit of the serif off. The next bit I'm using is the 90 degree bit at between 3 16 and a quarter of an inch. Now you'll notice that as I dropped into the Sasquatch, like where the arms are and also where the feet are, it gets really tight in there. So don't feel like you have to go full depth and take a risk at nicking the sides of your carving. You really don't. All you gotta do is make sure you get that wood low enough that you're not gonna have a high spot once you spray and sand. When it comes to making the cloud around your lettering, for new carvers especially, just draw yourself a line to follow. For me personally, I'm not very creative, so it took a long time to where I didn't have to draw a line. It just takes a couple extra seconds and it really does help out quite a bit, especially when you're first starting. Another good idea is to make sure you get in between all the letters like the H and the B and the O because it's super easy to get all your carving done, then you spray and sand and realize you forgot to cut out a few of those pieces. It's happened a few times to me. For the edge, I used our 45 degree chamfer bit. I put a real small chamfer on the back and then a pretty deep one on the front. And it's always a good idea to sand off those rough edges and also smooth out the corners. It's kind of a small step, but it really gives a sign a much more finished look. Then all I did was spray the back and the front with the primer, making sure not to overspray. And this blue pine did have some sanding sealer on it, so we were able to avoid any bleeding. Because without it, it definitely can't. Then I used our 80 grit disc on the disc sander and then our 120 grit disc on the random orbital to get all that black off and give it a nice smooth finish. Now I'm using a black Sharpie to get a couple of the high spots that I nicked with the sander or maybe I just forgot to chip them out and I missed them. Then for the heart, I'm just using a red Sharpie. Now make sure to do this before you put the clear on because if you do it after you put the clear on, number one, it'll smudge away and number two, it's not going to cover real well. So there you go guys. So this is a pretty simple carve and I think this would make a really good stock sign. So if you're selling at craft fairs or even if you have like an Etsy store, this is something you can knock out and make a bunch of 
have them bagged up and ready to ship, ready to sell right off the shelf. Something about stock signs, guys, is that anything that will make people smile always attracts a little bit more attention, and I think this is one of those products. So, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, you can shoot me an email, ryan at makeawoodsign.com, and we'll see you on the next one.